There's now an even easier way to run AI models locally other than using Olama. Now Docker just released their model runner and this is a complete game changer for running models locally so I want to show it to you in this video. Now just like Olama, you can manage, run, and deploy models locally with OpenAI compliant APIs. But the real game changer is that all of this is built right into Docker Desktop, so you don't need to install CUDA, you don't need to install a driver, you can just enable it and start using it right away. Now you can pull models directly from Docker Hub or from Hugging Face, and then you can run them from the command line or from your containers and deploy GenAI applications very quickly. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up and how to build two real applications from a simple Python chat app to a containerized streamlit dashboard. This is all going to be using the Docker model runner. Let's dive into it. Now, before we dive in, let me quickly cover what you need or the requirements to be able to run Docker model runner. And I'm also just going to quickly disclose that I did team up with Docker for this video, but everything you see here is completely free. All right, so if you're on Mac and you're using the newest Apple chips, so like the M1, the M2, the M3, etc., then you're golden. This is just going to work perfectly and it's actually able to utilize the GPU, not just the CPU. However, if you're still on the legacy Intel Macs, then unfortunately there's no support for this, so you won't be able to use this. Now for Windows users, you can run this on both CPU and GPU, as long as you have an NVIDIA GPU on your system. Now it's actually going to default to use the CPU, but if you have an available GPU, then it will automatically use that, again, as long as it's an NVIDIA card. Now if you're on Windows ARM and you're using a Qualcomm GPU, then this will work as well. Okay, and for Linux users, this runs on both CPU only setups as well as NVIDIA GPU configurations, which is actually really nice, which means you can utilize small models on like a small Linux VM on the CPU, or if you wanna run big models, then you can of course have an NVIDIA GPU and that will work on Linux. Now, unlike a lot of the other solutions out there, you don't need to install CUDA drivers, you don't need to mess with any GPU configs, Docker handles all of this for you and it will automatically pick the GPU if it's available in your system. Okay, so with that said, let me show you how to set this up. Let's go to the computer. All right, so I'm on the computer now and I'm gonna show you the very simple setup steps to make this work on your computer and then I'll show you how it functions. So what you're gonna need in order for this to work is Docker Desktop installed on your machine. That's pretty much it. Once you have Docker Desktop installed, then you need to open it up and you need to go to the settings tab, okay, or the settings page. From settings, you're gonna go here to where it says beta features and you're gonna see that it has enabled Docker model runner. Here, we're going to select that and we're gonna make sure that we enable the host side TCP support so that we're able to actually use this from something like our Python code. Then if you want, you can enable the GPU backed inference as well. Okay, so that's literally it. Once you enable that, just go ahead and press on apply and then you can use the model runner to interact with models directly from Docker desktop or you can do it from the command line. So if we close this here, you'll see now in Docker desktop that you should have this models tab popping up once you've enabled the model runner. From here, you can press on models and then it should show you various models that you can install. In my case, I already have the small two downloaded and you can see it's 300 uh, megabytes here, or 360 megabytes. But what we can do is we can pull models directly from Docker Hub. So you can see there's a few options here and we can download them or we can pull them from Hugging Face. Okay, so pick any model that you want. I just did the small two, so I just pressed pull on that, downloaded it to my sh machine, it took a second, and I'm just using that because it's very small for this video. Okay, so once you have one of the models pulled, then what you can do is you can just press run on it, and then you'll be brought into this interface where you can just directly talk to it. So hey, you know, what's up, right? And we can send this and we can get back a response, obviously extremely fast locally on my own computer, and in this case, it's using my GPU. Okay, so that's how you can do this directly from your Docker desktop. You also can inspect and kind of view what's going on with the model here. But if you want, you can of course do this from the command line as well. So if we open up a terminal or let's open up CMD here, then all we have to do is type Docker model like that. When you do the Docker model command, let's just make this full screen so you guys can see it, you're gonna get a list of how to use this command as well as all of the other options. If you've ever used Olama before, this is very similar. So if you wanted to pull a model, for example, you can say Docker pull, or sorry, Docker model 
pull, and then you can specify the name of the model that you want. Now, again, you can pull these models directly from Docker Hub. So you can see here the models are actually represented as OCI artifacts inside of Docker Hub, if that means anything to you. If not, don't worry too much about it, but you can see there's a bunch of different options and you can run them. Now, what's also interesting is that you can push models up and you can package your own models and then reuse them later. Okay, so if we wanted to pull a model, we can say Docker model pull, we can find one. So let's go here and let's pull maybe the AI Gemma 3. So we're going to go AI slash Gemma 3 like that. It's going to take a second and it's going to pull that model down for us. While that's running, I'll also mention that there's various different versions that you can use. So you can specify the number of parameters that you want when you're pulling these models. Okay, so the model has been pulled. So now if we want to run this, we can do Docker model. And then if we want to list the models that we currently have, we can type list and we can see the options. Okay, so here we have Gemma 3. So let's go Docker model run. And then we're just going to paste the name of our model. Make sure it matches exactly what you have right here. Go ahead and press enter and then you can start talking with it so we can say hey what is the meaning of life or something right and we should get back a response fairly quickly here okay and then you can go it's generating the tokens and it will give us the response all right so i'm just going to quit out of that by the way after you're in this interactive chat if you want to leave you can escape or get out of it by hitting Control c on your keyboard or you can type slash buy and that will exit you out of it. Now, of course, there is a lot of other commands that you can use here. For example, package, pull, removing, running, status. I'm not gonna go through all of them. What I am gonna do now though, is show you an example of how we can actually use the model runner from code because sure, it's interesting to run this in an interactive chat, but a lot of times we want our code to be able to interact with the models that we have on our computer locally. I'm first just gonna go over a bit of important information and then we'll get into those demos. You'll see the time stamps in the video player. All right, so unlike traditional containerized approaches, the models themselves from the Docker model runner are running directly on the host operating system, okay? They're not running inside of a container. Now, this means that they get direct access to your system resources like your GPU, for example, and your memory, so you can actually utilize the maximum performance of these models. Now, when you pull a model down, it's not packaged as a container image. Instead, it's downloaded as a model file and it's stored in your Docker directory. Now, the models can intelligently use both your CPU and your GPU, depending on what's available. Now, the benefit of this architecture is that you get the speed of native execution while keeping the simplicity of the Docker workflow. So the important thing to understand is that this is running on the host machine, not in a container. If that means nothing to you, don't worry. But for those of you that are a bit more advanced, that's an important thing that you should know. All right, now I quickly also just wanna go over how this compares to Olama because a lot of you are probably already using Olama and you're wondering what's the point of the Docker model runner. Now, the biggest difference here is the architecture. So with Olama, your models are running inside Olama's managed service, but with Docker model runner, they run directly on your host system so you end up getting better performance. Now, integration wise, when you use the model runner, it's built right into Docker desktop and it works seamlessly with Compose and various other development tools. So the entire Docker ecosystem pretty much, whereas Olama is really more of a standalone tool. Now, both of these do offer OpenAI compliant APIs, but they use different ports. Now, Olama makes its service available on port 11434, and the model runner is using 12434, okay? So note that important distinction. Now, if you're already deep into the Docker ecosystem and you're using it a lot and you want native integration, then this really is just the best thing to use because it will just integrate already into your workflow, right? Makes it a lot easier to deploy Gen AI applications. Whereas if you were going to use Olama, for example, typically what you would do is you would spin up your own Olama server instance, and then you would need to manage that independently compared to your Docker containers. Anyways, that's the main distinction. That's the difference between Olama and Docker model runner. If you're already using Docker, you might as well just use this and effectively does the same thing as Olama, except for that architecture difference. It just makes it very easy to access the models. So with that said, let's get into some code demos here. And I wanna show you how you can access the model runner locally on your own computer and how you can use it within a container in a Docker configuration. So now that we've gone over that, I am back on the computer and I'm going to show you how you can interact with these models from something like Python code. Now, the Docker model runner exposes all of the models and the service that it's providing on port 12434. So just like Olama, what you can do is you can simply interact with this URL. You can go to slash engines slash llama.cpp slash v1 slash chat slash completions. There's a few other ones as well that it provides and you can generate completions 
actions based on various messages. Now, this is what's called an OpenAI compliant API, meaning it follows the same practice as something like OpenAI or GPT. So however you've interacted with models before, you can pretty much do the exact same thing, except now you're just using this here as your base URL. So I just have a really simple script here in Python that shows you how this works. We import requests, then I just have some data. So in this case, I specify, oops, let's close that, the model that we wanna use, and then I specify the messages that we wanna send. So we have a system message and then a user message. And then you can see here that we generate a post request. So we say request.post to this URL, we pass our data, we wait to get the response. And then what we do is we simply print out the content of that response. So from here, I'll type uv run and then main.py. This is the script that I'm running right here. You'll see that it will take a second and then it will generate those 500 characters for us. Okay, so there we go. We can see that we get the 500 words that we asked it to generate, which is what I put in the prompt right here. Now, I just wanna show you that because this is OpenAI compliant, this also means that you can use other libraries that Python has to interact with this, uh, what do you call it, model runner. So here, what I've done is I've actually just used the OpenAI library. So there's a library that you can install in Python called OpenAI. And what I've done is I've simply swapped the base URL from being the OpenAI base URL to be the Docker model runner base URL. And now we'll start interacting with it just using this library. So that's the advantage of this being OpenAI compliant. You can see I create this OpenAI client. I swap the base URL. The API key needs to be here, but it can just be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. I specify the model. I prepare the message and then I can create a response again using this library rather than sending a manual request. Just to prove that to you, we can go uv run and then again openai version.py. This will take a second and then it should explain to us how transformers work. Okay, so you can see that we got the response. And again, I just wanna clarify the reason why this is really important is because this is OpenAI compliant, all of the modules typically that you're using in Python already know how to interact with this type of API. The only thing that you need to provide them in order to start using the Docker model runner rather than Olama, for example, is just this new base URL where you're specifying where the API lives. So again, that's a huge advantage and it means you can use it with existing libraries like the OpenAI one, like Langchain, like Langgraph, etc. So now I've showed you how to do this from your own local computer. Now I wanna show you how we can interact with this from a Docker container. So for this next example, I'm gonna show you the same thing except in a containerized application using Docker so you understand how this whole workflow comes together if you're gonna use this in a Docker container. Now what I've done is I've set up a very simple streamlit application, okay? So this is just a simple UI that allows you to just chat with an LLM. That's it, okay? And notice what I've done here is I've initialized a client using a base URL that I'm going to get from this backend.env file. Now from this env file, I've specified the base URL, the model, and then it just kind of a dummy API key. It doesn't matter what the API key is. We just need it for this particular library because if you don't have one, it's going to throw an error. Okay. So here, what I do is I specify the base URL this time equal to host.docker.internal. So last time you would have seen that I was using localhost. So I was using localhost port 12434 to communicate with the API. In this case, I swapped it to host.docker.internal. So this is the main change that you'll need to make if you wanna interact with the model runner from a Docker container. Now remember, the way that this works is the model runner is going to be running on the host operating machine. Hence, this host.docker.internal, right? So this is just what you need to swap the URL to so the container knows to go and essentially navigate to the host machine rather than looking for another containerized instance or application. Okay, so that's what we've set up. We've just changed that URL. And then of course, we need to do a few things in our Docker Compose and Docker file. So from our Docker Compose file, you see that I have a very basic configuration here and I specify an app. I'm building this in the slash app directory. Okay, I have my environment variable file. This is the port that my application is gonna run on, which is 8501 for Streamlit. And then I just added this. I said, depends on LLM. The reason I need this is because we're gonna be communicating with the Docker runner. So I have to tell it, hey, you know, we're, we need this. We're gonna be looking at the LLM or trying to talk to it. Then I simply specify the LLM service. So for the LLM service, I'd say, okay, this is LLM. We have a provider, the type is model, and then the options are this specific model. 
Now this can be loaded from your backend.env file, or you can just specify manually what you want the model name to be. This here is just like the backup. So if we don't find a variable for the model name, then we would use this model right here. Okay, very basic. That's literally all you have to do. And then of course, I just have a very simple Docker file here. This is like anything you would see just to run my Python code. So now what I can do is I can start running this. So I can say Docker, compose, and then build. So this has built the image for me. And then I can say Docker, compose, and then up, and I can put the container up, and then you'll see that it's now running. So what I can do is I can now open this up. So let me just open this in my browser. Okay, so you can see I've opened the Streamlit application running on localhost port 8501, and then I can send a request here. It's gonna get a response, and then it should generate that for us using the Docker model runner. And you can see we get our response. So main change is that you need to make sure that you specify that you're depending on the LLM service, provide the LLM service right here, and then make sure that you're using this host.docker.internal rather than using localhost when you're trying to communicate with the API. Okay, that is pretty much it. I think this is a very, very cool feature, especially if you use Docker a lot. This is gonna make it significantly easier to deploy Gen AI applications. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.